Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, good morning to you all. Very pleased to be here today with, uh, with so many of you. So uh, what I wanted to do today was really to talk about you know, how we can look to improve utilisation of our space with uh, more flexible working and also targeted space management. So what I wanted to do is just to walk through uh, some scenarios and case studies and then finish with a bit of Q&A if we have some time uh, towards the end. So in the modern work environment today, uh, the requirement for work to be carried out in a particular location has often disappeared. So with mobile technology and cloud computing, you know, the work that we do is carried around with us in the devices we have in our pockets, in our handbags, uh, even wear on our wrists. And the typical day in the office, uh, or day at work, can, can no longer see us in the office. We could be in, on a train, in a plane, in a coffee shop, or working from home. At Towers Watson are a management consultancy who were finding that they were running out of space in London, New York, and other locations such as Dallas uh, and also Paris. And this trend was across the globe for them, uh, again, recruiting too many staff uh, than the buildings could sustain. So the decision was made for them to adopt flexible working across the board, I suppose from the boardroom down to the boiler room. And with this, this approach, uh, I suppose a, a transition towards a more flexible outcome, uh, it really enabled them to avoid these relocations in multiple cities, uh, all within the space of, of the past 18 months. And really key for, for Towers Watson was unlocking the mobile user so that they can reserve a space through their mobile phone when they're out of the office, if they're visiting a client, they can just very quickly book a desk with a couple of taps on their phone and, and then pop into the office. So that really was, uh, I suppose, the two trends, really, flexible working and mobile, uh, mobile technology, really going hand in glove with one another. And, and finally, uh, Deloitte are really no strangers to agile working, and uh, they've really been pioneers in the concept of uh, really refining the usage of space and uh, really trying to reduce the amount of space that they have and use the savings that they make with this reduction to invest in more technology, uh, more collaboration tools, better video conferencing and unified communications, uh, also having better breakout space and uh, more informal meeting areas so that the teams can huddle and, and the office is seen more of a, a place where you go to, to meet your colleagues and interact with your, your, your uh, staff and team members and, uh, and they've got obviously the, the private spaces for uh, things like contract work and, and, and other confidential discussions that need to take place in, in quieter areas there. Uh, so, so with Deloitte really driving forwards uh, with this agile working methodology, we've, we've really you know, seen uh, them as being quite a, a pioneer in, in that particular concept. So really to unlock the value uh, in, I suppose, the, the flexible working drive and, and uh, you know, better space management, it's really using technology as that enablement tool to, to identify locations that, that have a requirement for this because obviously not, you know, one size does not fit all. You know, what may work for one site or one team or, or one culture may not work for another. And, and so it's about identifying what are the opportunities for more flexible working uh, to be introduced. It's around using these tools to better allocate that space as well and understand for example where there could be vacancy um, if we've allocated desks to users that simply aren't, are no longer there, and um, we need to trap that as best as possible. So with this technology, really, uh, one, one area that we're trying to drive towards is, is this integrated space strategy, and we'll walk through this cycle of really starting with planning the space, understanding what space you have in your inventory today. Uh, so some organizations you know, simply aren't able to get their arms around what space they actually have. Uh, so understanding what you have in your inventory is really half of the battle. Then it's around uh, managing that space efficiently and allocating the spaces to teams that do require space. Uh, and then going through and identifying what desks effectively can be made reservable for, for different team members. Uh, then moving through and being able to, to schedule that space as a, a user. So through my mobile app or through another means, I can then book that space as and when I require it. And then the crucial component is then reviewing the utilization. You know, what desks were actually used and trying to understand uh, through this metric uh, what teams may require more space or what teams maybe you know, can have desks taken away from them. And that's truly where you, you get to this agile methodology where the, the, the supply of space is given or taken away from uh, the teams based upon the actual demand of what they're actually using there. And with every iteration of this cycle, we're further refining the workplace. 
we're, we're further getting more value and we're further adjusting that supply crucially to the demand there. So I just wanted to walk through that cycle with, with some, uh, I suppose, uh, key uh, aspects of, of the different phases there. And I suppose really the first point from the planning is really to understand you know, what space there is today and what is the status of those relevant spaces. And uh, the dashboard is you know, something on your car. It tells you how fast you're going, how much fuel you have left in the tank. And a dashboard can also be used for space as well. Uh, to understand you know, what buildings you have, what is the current status of these buildings by a key performance indicator that you've set, maybe vacancy or occupancy or cost per square feet or cost per occupant. These are all uh, KPIs that you might want to be uh, looking at, logging into and, and, and checking on a day-by-day -day basis to see how your buildings are performing. Uh, also, you can use this to benchmark how you're performing against your peers, so anonymously comparing your data with another financial firm uh, anonymously in your industry or the benchmark for, for your particular trend or area there. And so this is really where we can identify a building that has high demand for space, but it also has low vacancy and low utilisation. So that's really an ideal uh, candidate for flexible working. So if we consider a building in London, a lot of people will want to commute into London, um, and I'm sure that all of you have you know, the similar challenge where you simply don't have enough space to meet the demand of people who want to come into that location. And the floor plans are really uh, what allows you to understand uh, where the space is and what its current status is. And, and layering in things like vacancy and utilisation, you're able to, to get a picture of exactly how each floor and how each space is actually being used. And this is the point where you can start to understand, does a space need to be repurposed for better use uh, or, or eff effective better utilisation across those particular teams? The next step is really understanding future demands for the relevant team members and the team department heads. Uh, how are they looking to recruit staff over the next six months, three years, five years? It's really trying to understand how is that demand going to change moving forwards so we can get ahead of the curve so that if our workforces are going to grow by 5, 10, 15 percent, uh, we need to really be finding you know, that percentage or more of space for these people who are going to be coming into the building. Uh, you know, no, not, we don't want to have any, any more the, the case of HR saying to us, oh, you know, we need more desks for next Monday, we've got 20 people you know, joining. And that's a very reactive, uh, I suppose, um, and counterproductive approach, really. We want to try and get ahead of the curve wherever possible. And a key part of, of I suppose, planning and understanding your space is to do walkthroughs and understand where there is vacancy. If a desk has been assigned to someone who is always out of the office or is no longer with the company, we want to validate that what our floor plans are saying are actually correct. And so, you know, with some organizations, Bank of America, for example, they've they found actually it was between four and five percent of space that they actually had turned out to be vacant, which they thought was being used by staff members, but in fact they'd moved themselves or they'd left the organization and simply the the data you know, wasn't as trustworthy as, as they thought it was. So by validating and doing these walkthroughs, it's um, really enabling uh, the organization to understand where there is that vacancy and therefore increasing the supply uh, where that's found. Now the key part here is really to find those desks that are candidates for reservable spaces and to align those with teams that do fit well with the flexible working methodology. So for those of our staff members who you do tend to be out of the office um, several times a week, who are perhaps home workers or uh, perhaps visiting suppliers and clients, these are ideal candidates uh, for flexible working and certainly that's been uh, an area that, that we've seen a lot of success in. And so with these spaces on the floor plan, able to then mark them as reservable and make them bookable by the end users, either through the floor plans or through the mobile device. And so it's all integrated with those same floor plans that you're using in the planning phase. Now the crucial part really is when the users are booking spaces, they're then able to check in with, through a number of different means uh, to really capture that actual utilization. And that is really the, the holy grail of what we're trying to achieve. It's really understanding that a space has actually been used. And there are a number of different ways that we can do that. We can interface with technologies such as um, access control systems, uh, badge swipes and so on, and also the use of, say, the, the mobile device to scan a QR code on the desk to, to tie in the user with the place and the date and the time and verify that, yes, they're at that space 
um, for, for their reservation there. And so what you're doing is building up over time to understand what are the usage trends based upon different teams, different departments, times of the day, really trying to get into where the peaks and the troughs are for, for the demand for space. And so moving through, we're able to understand hot and cold desks, what desks are most and least utilized, and what could be the reasons behind that. Uh, could it be that that desk has you know, a particular good position near to you know, their team or near to a neighborhood that you've constructed? Um, you know, could it be that that desk or that space is you know, under an air conditioning unit? No one wants to sit there because it's always freezing cold. You know, th these are the type of things you can start to look into to really say, well, why are, are these desks down the bottom hardly ever used? It's also around you know, understanding where those peaks are occurring. It's in a typical day, you know, where, where are workers going to be at their desks? You know, what are the, I suppose, peak days of the week? And you know, typically it might be Tuesday through to Thursday it might be the peak times or peak days uh, in your office. And so maybe encouraging staff to, uh, to book spaces if they're just coming in for, for those times during the week there. And so with this utilization data, this is really where we, we have the information around those departments that you've created the neighborhoods for. How are they actually using those desks? And this is the point where we can start to refactor the supply of that workspace. Look at how IT are using their desks compared to maybe real estate or projects and start to assign some of their desks to the other teams that they have uh, you know, a more significant demand in. And so with the stacking tools, it's really going back to the planning phase. And so with each iteration, we're then recycling that space, reviewing, understanding, that this team uh, have only used their desks maybe 70%, whereas another team has used 90, 95%, has take some of those desks from that team and allocate them to another team. And so that's really, I suppose, the agile working uh, approach that we're really trying to encourage, really, and, um, and try to support through some of the work we're doing uh, with some of the clients. So the real benefit of that cycle, ultimately, is for us to you know, increase the same amount of staff to the same amount of workplace, much like what we saw with, uh, with Towers Watson. Uh, or the, the alternative is really to reduce the amount of workspace required and maybe move from, say, six floors down to five floors, or maybe close a building from our uh, property or, or portfolio properties in and around one area and reduce the amount of, of uh, investment required to service those, those properties and those buildings. And the overall benefits for space planners is really this is one system to holistically plan uh, the allocation, the vacancy, and the utilization of space. Um, there's integrated floor plans to save that manual transfer, and we're able to reduce occupancy, uh, reduce vacancy where appropriate there. And finally, for the organization, it's really you know, reducing the cost through you know, improved space optimization. It's around avoiding or having a, a scalable business that has this elastic supply of space that can be applied as and when it's required. And it's also around effectively improving the brand image as an employer, having more of a, I suppose, a flexible working methodology that people will want to work for. And I think the underlying factor is to attract and retain talent. I think we all can appreciate that uh, you know, there is a, a competition for top talent and uh, having a, a flexible office, uh, I think really could be a key factor for a graduate to, to really be choosing to, uh, to work for, uh, for an organization. Feel free to come speak to myself or a couple of my colleagues afterwards. And we do have a, a stand outside as well. So uh, if you wanted to pop by and, uh, and get one of our contact cards, please let us know. Thank you very much. Thank you.